quasi here. On September 18th, 1947, a secret organization was founded who was responsible for manipulating the minds of individuals and changing their identity without them even knowing. This organization is the very renowned Central Intelligence Agency. Today, we're gonna to be pulling back the curtains on one of the CIA's top secret mind control programs. See, in the 1950s, the CIA launched a project called the MK Ultra to crack the code of mind control. Their explanation was that if other countries cracked the code and were able to weaponize the minds of unsuspecting people, then we would need to do it as well. To do this, they went to extreme lengths, testing hypnosis, sensory deprivation, and powerful psychedelics, all to shatter free will and reshape subjects' realities. But why were they so obsessed with reprogramming the mind? Likely because they realized intuition, self-image, and identity could be totally destroyed and rebuilt any way they saw fit. And if they could alter someone's identity and artificially plant thoughts, emotions, and actions, they owned them. After documents, about MK Ultra were finally declassified decades after the experiments took place, it truly revealed the immense malleability of the human mind and that our identities and realities are far more flexible than we first realized. However, in their reckless quest for mind control, the CIA may have actually spawned total chaos. Some MK Ultra subjects may have even been set on their deranged paths after being subjected to the CIA's experiments. Although MKUltra revealed the dark side of the government's overreach, it also reveals something we can use to our advantage. Here's what I mean. When you are not under someone else's control, you can unlock incredible potential and manifest amazing changes by shifting your identity. And by understanding your own mental patterns, listening to your intuition and engaging in positive conditioning, you can awaken to far greater possibilities within. And although the CIA's goals were unethical, we can take their techniques and harness them for good. And that's why in today's videos, I'm gonna share with you specific methods based on MKUltra that you can use to transform your own life, including reprogramming the deepest layers of your mind to attain a permanent shift in your life, fine-tuning your intuition so you know what the correct path is to take, and removing layers and layers of faulty programming that has been built up over the years that you didn't choose. Think of it as a factory reset for your mind, clearing out junk and optimizing your subconscious to be a reality-creating machine. This is the same thing that I had to use for myself to break free of that nine-to-five employee mindset and eventually become a seven-figure entrepreneur, manifest the partner of my dreams and get in the best shape of my life. I pretty much wake up every single morning thinking, wow, is this really my life? I'm gonna show you how to break free of limitations and write your own story and prove to you that your mind contains untapped superpowers waiting to be harnessed. This is a serious task and requires your full 100% commitment to your transformation. Are you ready? Without wasting any more time, let's get started. One thing we really have to understand is that all of these experiments that the CIA conducted in the MK Ultra project, they were highly illegal. Not only were they illegal, they were also highly unethical and violated tons of human rights. And in this modern day and age, if you really saw what they did, it would be despicable. Many of these things included administering illegal drugs like heroin, LSD, without consent. Like imagine giving someone drugs and they didn't even sign up to the study. And they did it with people who were actually members of the CIA and other subjects that they took from, uh, from all different trials that people signed up to, not knowing uh, what they were signing up for. It's the principles that we can extract from the MKUltra project that there are different layers to the mind. In order to program the mind in the way that we desire, we have to first understand how the mind actually works. If you live day-to-day -day life in observation of how your mind works, you'll notice that there are basically a few different layers of mind, okay? The one that is most prevalent is the conscious mind. Our daily actions and what we do are largely influenced by the conscious mind. But then sometimes we don't know why we do the, the things that we do and why we do it the way we do it. And that's influenced by the subconscious mind. The conscious and the subconscious constitute for around 10%, 5% each. When you get down a layer below the subconscious mind, it's the unconscious mind. 
And a layer even below the unconscious mind is the collective unconscious. The unconscious and the collective unconscious makes up about 90% of our whole being. One quote that I always, always think about when I think about my patterns, why I am the way that I am, people are the way that they are. It's by Scott Orson Card. We question all our beliefs except for the ones that we truly believe in and those we never think to question. Sigmund Freud said something similar along the lines of, until we make the unconscious conscious, it will always haunt us and we will always call it fate. My whole journey over the last eight, nine years that's allowed me to successfully reprogram my mind is just acutely observing my unconscious behavior. If you look at ancient yogis, Buddhists, they all have one practice in common, the practice of meditation. The Buddha spent 40 days and 40 nights under the Bodhi tree, isolated himself, and he simply meditated. That's the one practice that is very, very common. What is the practice of meditation? It is simply bringing your conscious awareness to something that is largely unconscious. We are making the unconscious conscious. If you do something as simple as watching your breathing, which is unconscious, or watching your heartbeat, you have no control over that, and you observe the natural patterns and rhythms of your heartbeat and your breathing. The main thing that I want you to take away from understanding this is understanding that the main goal, the first step, that you must take to gaining control over your life and over your mind is to make the unconscious conscious. How do we do this? What's the most effective way of doing this? Simply with the light of awareness. What do I mean by this? Over the last three or so years, I've become very, very focused. My practice has become very, very focused on simply watching and witnessing, awakening the inner witness not judging and rushing to intervene in what's going on. If I find myself doing something that I didn't intend to do, I don't immediately change it. I simply watch and observe it. Or I have an impulse to do something and move in a certain direction, I don't immediately give in to that impulse. Whether it be checking my email or going to social media, sometimes I used to use binge eating as a way of relieving stress, I would eat tons of dessert, go on social media and endlessly scroll because I was stressed out and anxious about something. But then what started to happen was I replaced that immediate urge to check social media or to eat with a space in between. I told myself, hey, I can do all of those things. That's okay. I'm not judging it. But before I go and do it, I'm going to sit here and observe and watch the feeling for a bit. I'm not gonna judge it. I'm simply going to investigate it. Now I'm no longer the character. I'm simply a witness. I'm watching the play happen. I'm watching the character. When you start to do this, guess what happens? You're making this whole unconscious part of you more and more conscious. What happens when you make the unconscious conscious? You take control of your own fate. What started to happen was that in this light of awareness, I started to gain control over my life, say things and make intentions and actually followed through with them. A lot of people wonder why they can't do the things that they say they're gonna do. It's because they fall unconscious. They are not used to living consciously. So the main mission for us is to get into this mode of awareness and watching. That is the first and most important step in my opinion. 80% of the work is done once you're aware of what the problem is in the first place and 20% of it is just solving it. You really need to cultivate this habit, this culture or lifestyle of living in complete and total awareness before any action or any impulse or any time a thought arises. You simply watch it. Give it your complete and whole attention. Even as I make this video right now, there is a watching of this character speaking. I am not it. It is simply happening, but there is a watching of all of it. So as you deepen yourself in this practice, Sri Ramana Mahashi called this self-inquiry. You're inquiring into the self and you're stepping beyond the impulses of mind and body. When you can do that, now you have the power to program yourself in the way that you want. Because understand this, in life, we're simply wearing different masks. When you are at your work, you're wearing a particular mask of that employee that you're supposed to be. When you're with your family, you're wearing that mask of the kind of son or daughter you're supposed to be. When you're with your partner, you're wearing that mask of the husband or wife that you're supposed to be. We're wearing masks all the time. Unfortunately, 
These masks that we're wearing, we haven't consciously chosen them. Who we are right now is largely and has largely been formed unconsciously. Our mission now is to form this self, this identity, this character that we want to be. And as a result, as a byproduct of you wearing the right mask, the right external reality will manifest. When you have the right internal reality, the right external reality shows up for you. So once you've understood this first step and you've started to apply it in your life, the next step we have to fully, fully grasp is the stimulus response cycle. This is one of the things that has completely changed my life because I noticed that the unconscious and natural reactions that I had to certain events that were occurring kept the same events happening again and again and again. And once I changed this pattern, everything changed for me. I stopped attracting the same situations over and over again. And I started to notice that certain kinds of people keep attracting the same kinds of relationships, the same toxic relationships, or keep attracting similar kinds of clients that they don't wanna work with, or similar situations that keep happening over and over in their lives. It almost feels like they've been cursed. This is how you change this pattern once and for all. In life, we're presented with a stimulus, okay? An event happens, a neutral event happens. So we have a stimulus, and no, it's not the stimulus checks that you received during the pandemic, even though those were great. Most of the times, the stimulus that we're presented with in daily life are not as great. For example, let's say you were sleeping and there's a bird screaming outside your window. This is neither a positive nor a negative event. What happens in the mind when there is this bird chirping? At first, there is a cognition of this event. You're hearing something, it's sound, not taste. Then you recognize it, this sound as a bird chirping and not a dog barking. All of this is through millions of years of evolution. The reason why you have a particular facial feature, a particular nose, a particular chin, particular kind of ears, millions of years of evolution. And our brains have evolved in a very, very powerful way that's allowing us to live coherently, be able to walk in a room of gravity and not be like, oh, why am I stuck to the ground? Years of evolution that's deeply stored in our unconscious and our collective unconscious. You recognize it as bird chirping. Here's the interesting part. Now there is an emotional reaction to it. Is this good, bad, or neutral? If it's associated with pleasure or pain, it will have a polar emotional reaction. If it's associated with neither, you haven't processed that before. You don't have an opinion about it. It's neither positive nor negative, it's neutral. But one thing is for sure there is a reaction. Even a non-reaction itself is a reaction. This whole process is completely unconscious. We have no control over it. We have been conditioned to react a certain way, recognize it a certain way, cognize it a certain way. We don't have control over this, at least not yet. Maybe yogis who have supreme powers can change all of this and turn themselves and materialize as a dog, but maybe we don't have the powers to do that yet. But what we do have the power to do that is in every single human being's control right now is what happens after this the conscious part of this. How you change this cycle to stop attracting more and more negative situations or situations that are undesirable is simply by choosing the response, the conscious response you have to this. When I started off in my business and I didn't structure my business correctly, I didn't structure agreements and there were lots of misunderstandings between me and my customers, I was living in fear every single day because I was making a lot of sales and we were doing 100 to $150,000 a month. And then I'd never encountered, I had my first refund request. And I was like, holy shit, oh no. Oh my God, what is this? I have to give the money back? I had built up a self image, right? And I didn't like giving money back. And once we've made it, it's done. The transaction is done, the sale is done. I don't want to deal with this. But then when I got my first one, I was like, what if it happens again? The stimulus I was presented with was a refund request in my email. And my cognition was proper, recognition was proper, but my reaction was highly, highly negative. And remember, we color our reality with the kind of reactions or the emotional feelings that we have. When our mind and our heart comes together, which is what we're gonna discuss in the next part. When we have coherence of heart and mind, we attract more of a particular scenario. So what happened was that month, I received three additional ones. I went from getting no requests to getting three additional ones in one particular month. And I was like, holy shit, what's happening? And at that point, I remember being in 
uh, at a restaurant in Boston with my wife and I was like, Bridge, what's happening? Like, is my business collapsing? I barely even started. I was completely unconscious at that point and just reacting. I didn't have the light of awareness then to choose my response. But then I started to realize what was happening and I took some time and I looked at it and I could address it as, hey, life is trying to tell me something. Maybe this is something that I need to fix. I need to find a way to make my product better, structure everything better, set the right expectations. Maybe that's the lesson that I'm getting so I can become a better business owner. You see how I took a negative reaction and chose a positive response to it? Years later, oftentimes when I get this stimulus, it doesn't affect me as much anymore because I know that I can deal with it because I had conditioned myself to respond positively to it. And when you have that negative reaction, there's a brief moment where there is a watching of that reaction. You step back from that reaction. When you become conscious and you take the reins to control your life, you take a step back from the reaction. You simply, there is a space in between you reacting and you responding. And in that space, you neutrally observe. You witness that reaction arising. And now you have a choice. When there is that space, there is a choice to fill up that space with the kind of reality you want to create in the next moment. From that point on, when I realized what was happening, I decided to take my own medicine and I said, hey, maybe this is trying to tell me something. And that led me to improving everything and our refund rates went down and it's practically, knock on wood, zero. That could have easily not been the case if I had continued on in this cycle of panic. It could have become very, very self-destructive, right? So in your life, I want you to think about the things that are happening that you keep running away from, the things that you're avoiding, the things that you're afraid of, and begin to watch them with this cycle in mind. Once you change that response and you interject with the chosen response, the positive response, your reality starts to change as well in direct proportion to the attitude that we have to this mirror of reality. Your attitude is everything. Are you open? Are you closed? Are you always running away from things or are you confronting your problems? What is the kind of human being that you want to be? What is the kind of creator that you want to be? And that is a choice that is completely in your hands. Choose your response. I can promise you if you just do this for six months, consciously choosing your response to everything. Goals that you've been trying to manifest for the past year, two, three years, they'll come to life. The second part to this, to breaking this pattern that you've been experiencing and really gaining control over the subconscious mind is a principle they actually used with the CIA, the practice of physical torture. Now we're not gonna be physically torturing ourselves, but we're gonna be extracting principles from it that I think was helpful, which is breaking the pattern. Break your patterns by doing uncomfortable things. See, it's okay if you uh, subject physical torture consciously in a controlled manner to yourself. It's not okay when someone else subjects it to you without your consent. And if you really wanna grow, you have to do things that are outside of your comfort zone. Currently, this is our zone of comfort. Our goals are oftentimes outside of this zone of comfort. When you do things that you're uncomfortable doing, you're basically going from this smaller circle and expanding your region of sensory awareness to something wider. Usually when there's something that I need to do that I'm avoiding or I'm procrastinating on, I make myself do it no matter how uncomfortable I am, no matter how many excuses that I make. At the gym, when I tell myself to do that extra rep, I'll do an extra, extra rep just to push myself. And recently I was reading this great book, it's by Michael Easter, The Comfort Crisis. And he describes how we live in so much comfort in our day-to-day -day lives, in a temperature controlled room, sitting in front of a computer. When was the last time you went a day without food? We have everything at our fingertips and this comfort is killing us. We are the most comfortable when we become dead. All of this comfort is actually causing a lot of the diseases that we see, cancers, anxieties, depressions. The way around it is to strategically introduce discomfort in your life. Finding ways to make yourself uncomfortable, doing things that are completely outside of your comfort zone. It can be little things to start off with, like brushing with your non-dominant hand, taking a different path to work, or going to the gym and doing a strenuous workout. But if you wanna take things further, he talks about this concept called misogi, a Japanese term, where he says once a year he does something that A, he has only 50% chance of succeeding at, and B, will not kill him. One of them included lugging an 80 pound boulder 10 or 20 feet underwater. But I highly recommend you give that book a read. It really revived me to the idea of 
learning how to break our patterns and being more and more uncomfortable, pushing yourself every single day. Because I know especially that when I started on this journey and I had zero subscribers and zero following and I was making YouTube videos, there was a time when I didn't want to make YouTube videos. Actually, most of the time I didn't want to make YouTube videos, but I still pushed myself against myself to do it. And guess what happened? I went out of my comfort zone and expanded into a bigger comfort zone. How much confidence do you think it builds if you tell yourself you're gonna do something and you actually do it no matter how you feel? You're no longer a slave to your feelings. You are fully conscious and fully in control. Whatever you say, you do and your word becomes that powerful. If you say you're going to manifest $100,000, you will manifest $100,000, and you fully believe and trust it. This is how you gain that trust in yourself, by working against this unconscious self that's been conditioned by comfort and is always seeking comfort and to be safe and pushing yourself to grow. So the final thing that's going to make this all click is understanding how to attain a coherence in heart and mind, because that's the thing that actually makes subconscious impressions. I invite you to think about your past and the memories that you keep of your past. Do you remember anything where you didn't have a feeling associated to it? Or do you remember the ones that had the strongest feelings associated with them? the most painful memories, the most joyful memories, the birth of your child or the death of a loved one. Our nervous system can't tell the difference between what's real and what's imagined. If there is a unity between heart and mind, what will happen is you activate this powerful faculty within you known as outer intention. The mind and the heart, when they work in conjunction, leads you to immediately creating outcomes, to creating and manifesting outcomes very, very quickly. By the mind, I'm talking about organized thought. And by heart, I'm talking about feeling. When you learn to think feelingly, you imagine what you want, you craft a picture of it in your mind's eye, and you feel the associated feelings that you would feel as though it's already happened or it's happening. When that happens, you put an impression in your subconscious mind. When you repeatedly do it again and again, every single day, that's the thing you keep focusing on, then you create more and more impressions. It's like stacking chips on one side of the scale. Ask every single client that we've had, the main thing that they did, the ones who've actually gotten like crazy, crazy results. I was talking earlier to one of our clients. He was 15 the time he joined us. He went from doing 5K a month to 20K a month. I believe now he's doing over 60K a month and he just, manifested his Mercedes AMG that he had on his, on his self mastery guide, our version of the vision board. He was like, yeah, I still do my affirmations to this day. And the way we do our affirmations, if you guys watched the last video, I talked about this, is getting that coherence in heart and mind. And when you do it, there's this thing in your subconscious mind called the RAS, the reticular activating system. When thought and feeling come together, your RAS gets correctly programmed, so you notice every single opportunity that will lead you to that goal. Your mind all of a sudden becomes a filtering mechanism to only notice opportunities that will get you to that revenue goal you wanna to get to, that will help you manifest that partner you wanna manifest. And all of these coincidences seemingly happen all because of just this one thing, coherence in heart and mind. Once you combine this with watching in conscious awareness, witnessing, choosing that response consciously, once you combine that with proper thought and feeling coherence, this becomes a very, very powerful system for you to use. I remember at a certain point in my journey when I wanted to grow, I was stuck for a long time, especially with my YouTube channel, you can see that I was stuck at like 150,000, 180,000 subscribers for a very, very long time because I believed there was a right and a wrong way to do things and I was very, very stubborn with it. And when I was presented with ways in which I wanted to grow, I immediately rejected it because I thought I knew better. My heart and mind were not in coherence. I wanted to grow, but the whole time I thought about avoiding failing. How many times has it happened that you've thought about the revenue that you want or the thing that you want in your life, but you keep focusing more and more on the thing that you're afraid of, the thing you're trying to run away from. 99% of people that we speak to, this is the one thing that's missing. They don't have full coherence in heart and mind. They think about all of the goals and all the things that they want to manifest in their lives, but subconsciously, a little bit below the surface, they're secretly worried about failing. They're worried about the fears that they have around bills and that's what they want to get away from. They want to make money because they want to get away from bills. They can't focus themselves in the right direction. Why? It's because they don't have full control over their faculties because there isn't an observation. There isn't an awareness on this unconscious thing that's happening in the first place. When we bring awareness into our unconscious patterns, we take control over our fate. 
And then we start to impress our subconscious mind with fully focusing in that direction that we want to focus. Then everything falls into place as though by magic. I believe the most powerful way to do this is through the art of visualization. And in particular, we focus on two different types of visualization. Goal visualization, where you focus on that final goal you want to achieve, maybe a year, five years, 10 years later, and process visualization. What will bridge the gap between your current step and your next step? I actually made a comprehensive video on this, completely detailing it. I even made a cheat sheet just for you, completely free to access, it's literally on YouTube. You can click right here to access it. If you're watching this right now, I know you're committed to making a transformation and the very fact that you're watching this very long video to the very end and you've absorbed all of this tells me that you're gonna make it, okay? It's just a matter of time when. So keep staying diligent, I'm rooting for you. Our goal here is to help every single human being on earth to master their destinies. I am maybe 0.2% of the way there. We still have 7 billion, 725 million people to impact. I'd appreciate it if you share this video with one of your friends, one of a close friend, or maybe someone that you think will benefit from it. But in the meantime, I've made this visualization video for you that I think has been very, very helpful. Over 800,000 people have watched it. They've loved it. They've shared it with someone. So go watch this right now if you haven't. It's literally on YouTube. And I will see you in this next video right now. Thanks.